here I think it's so important to underline that a vaccine only strategy won't get us out of this. Uh, we've seen countries with really good vaccination rates, and in this instance, Singapore, which has overall done very well managing the pandemic. But if you move from a number of public health controls to vaccine only, you do see vaccination rates rise. We've just seen it in Germany also, you know, their great concern about this fourth wave. The United Kingdom, which again got to reasonable rates of vaccination, removed all controls. And now, you know, deaths coming in at somewhere around 1,000 a day, 50,000 new mm. cases. So, you know, we're in the middle of this. And, and what I would say to the countries, and there are many around the Asia Pacific Rim who have been successful with uh, vaccine rollouts, is that won't do it alone. You must be able to calibrate bringing back in or maintaining public health measures relevant to the epidemiological state of the, the pandemic in your country at the time. In New Zealand, as we know, we're grappling with uh, how to emerge from, you know, keep it out. Uh, you know, it, it's very hard to keep Delta out. Everyone's wrestling with it. We have to move to other systems, but we also have to keep sensible public health controls. I think what has been a problem is where there have been leaders who have distrusted science and caused uh, you know, cynicism about public health measures and, and even in some cases promoted you know, fake news about uh, the pandemic. So leaders playing it by the book, listening to the scientists, making it clear to their publics what is the information on which they are relying. Look, leaders aren't going to get everything right. This is a wicked problem of a kind which the world hasn't grappled with since uh, 1918, when there wasn't social media around to complicate the responses. Uh, so, you know, we're always wise in hindsight. The WHO went into this pandemic under-resourced and underpowered. When I say under-resourced, its annual budget is, is apparently about the level of one kind of large, you know, New York hospital's annual budget. I mean, it, it, it's not good. And while the WHO hasn't got everything uh, right, nor has anyone, and this is the worst public health crisis since 1918. So the concern now is, is to get it right, to empower WHO, but to more broadly to put in place a, a global health architecture that would stand up for the future. And, and the uh, panel that I co-chaired with the former president of Liberia, great people on it, we said you need a leader-level global health threats council that keeps the issue of preparedness and response on the front burner mm -hmm. uh, going forward, because this isn't going to be the last pandemic threat we face. The issue is whether we can make this the last pandemic, which we could if we did the right things. We've urged that there be a dedicated financing mechanism. Quite a lot of support around for that, and the United States has put a, a quarter of a trillion dollars on the on the table to, to get it going. We think, uh, as a panel, we need new uh, legal instruments, a new framework convention negotiated under the WHO uh, constitution and amendments to the international health regulations. Uh, we think that the platform for collaboration on vaccines, therapeutics, diagnostics, other commodities and supplies needs to be redesigned uh, on a global public goods uh, model. So there's, there's lots of things we can do to strengthen multilateralism, but we went into it unprepared and underpowering our global health organisation. I often say that there's no point in being pessimistic because we're a long time dead. We have to you know, do the best to, to, to grab the positives that can come out of, of, of standing up to a crisis. You know, building back better or building back forward, whatever the phrase of the day is, that's what we have to aim to do. We can strengthen our national systems for pandemic preparedness and response, and we can strengthen the global uh, systems. And all of that is good for business. Look, if we're looking at you know the, the world we're trying to create, clearly the pandemics exposed all these issues of marginalisation and exclusion. So inclusion going forward is critical. Uh, sustainability going forward, very, very important as uh, per the, the COP conference. But there's a third factor, and that is building in resilience. Because if we don't have resilient systems like good pandemic preparedness and response, we're going to repeat these lessons over and over. And, and the, the zoonotic 
spillover diseases from animals to humans are coming at us uh, faster. It's just a, a fluke, really, that we haven't had one emerge in the right conditions for a blow up into a pandemic like the one we've got today. So invest in preparedness and your capacity for quick response. That's what every business should be saying to government in every country.